I used to love this publication. When I received it, I studied it inside and out. However, did I truly pay attention to what was written in this publication? Well, it turns out I didn't. For instance, look at this chart. All these prophetic time periods had starting and ending point dates. These were signs and indications that I was into one true organization. Notice what was written in regard to these prophetic time periods. With all these prophetic marks to identify the Holy Ones of the Supreme One, what excuse can there be for failure to recognize them and associate with them? The importance of this chart and the information contained in this book seemed of monumental importance. Many of these time periods were said to revolve around the organization. It was strongly implied that failure to recognize and associate with this organization would be embracing destruction. Let us go through some of these time periods and see if indeed they add up. The first we will consider is the three and a half times, the 1,260 days. In this chart, we see a rough approximation from December of 1914 to June 1918. Let's go to chapter 9 of this book and see the starting and ending point of this period. The starting point is described like this. For anointed Christians, World War I meant a time of testing. By the end of 1914, they were expecting persecution. In fact, the very year text chosen for 1915 was Jesus' question to his disciples, Are ye able to drink my cup? It was based on Matthew 20:22, 20, King James Version. Hence, beginning in December of 1914, that small band of witnesses preached in sackcloth. Here we find a rough approximation for when the 1,260 days begins, December 1914. What about the end of this period? We find later a description of the end point, saying, Harassment of God's anointed ones climaxed on June 21, 1918, when the president, J.F. Rutherford, and prominent members of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society were sentenced on false charges to long prison terms. Intending to change times and law, the small horn had effectively killed the organized preaching work. So the foretold period of a time and times and half a time ended in June 1918. Here we find a definite endpoint to the end of the 1260 days June 21st 1918 however have you ever calculated such figures for yourself if we go into Excel and type in the endpoint June 21st 1918 then enter 1260 days then we enter a formula subtracting a1 minus a2 we should come up to the beginning of the 1260 days what we find is june 8th 1915 the daniel publication said that the beginning of the 1260 days started in december of 1914 that doesn't add up let us proceed on to the 1,290 days. The chart gives the starting and ending point as January 1919 to September 1922. Let's get a little more detail around that. The beginning of the 1,290 days is tied to the setting up of the disgusting thing that is causing desolation. This is interpreted as the League of Nations. Here we read, the league was officially proposed in January 1919. At that time, then both conditions of Daniel 12.11 were met. So the 1,290 days began in early 1919 and ran until the autumn, northern hemisphere, of 1922. Here we find that the starting point is when the League of Nations was officially proposed. What about the end point? We find... By the end of the foretold 1,290 days, the Holy Ones were well on their way to a cleansed and restored standing. In September of 1922, right about the time when this period ended, they held a landmark convention at Cedar Point, Ohio, USA. The ending point would be the Bible Student Convention at Cedar Point, Ohio in September of 1922. However, the details here are a bit vague. So we have to dig a little bit more in order to find an exact date. First, when was the League of Nations officially proposed? 
a little research and we can find that it was on January 25th, 1919. This should be our starting point for our 1,290 days. How about the ending point, the convention at Cedar Point? This occurred from September 5th to September 13th, 1922. Now it's time to do a little basic math. We enter January 25th, 1919, when the League of Nations was officially proposed. Add 1,290 days, and we come to August 7th, 1922. However, the Cedar Point Convention did not start to September 5th, 1922, nearly a month later. This doesn't add up either. Well, next we will look at the 1,335 days. Here we find that the starting and ending points are September 1922 to May 1926. Let us look at the starting and ending points of this time period in more detail. According to this, history suggests that it, the 1,335 days, simply follows on the heels of the preceding period. In that case, it would run from autumn of 1922 to the late spring of 1926. The important takeaway from this is that the 1,335 days would end on the heels of the 1,290 days, and the 1,290 days are said to have ended in the Cedar Point Convention, September 13, 1922. Because the publication is not more specific, that is pretty much the best we can do. What about the ending point? Later on we find this event that seems to end the 1,335 days. At the convention in May of 1926, the book Deliverance was released, see page 302. This was one of a series of new books designed to replace studies in the scriptures. No longer were the holy ones looking to the past, they were looking confidently to the future and the work ahead. As prophesied, the 1,335 days therefore ended with the holy ones in a happy state. So the end point to this time period is integral to this convention, in particular the release of the book Deliverance. The Revelation book has more detail. It says, in response to the fifth trumpet, a particular aspect of these judgments was emphasized at a convention of the Bible students in London, England, May 25th through 31st, 1926. Let us plug in our numbers. We enter September 13th, 1922, which was the last day of the Cedar Point Convention, add 1,335 days, and we end up at May 10th, 1926, about two weeks before the convention that was held in Royal Albert Hall. Again, it does not add up. Next, let us look at the 2,300 evenings and mornings. Here we have an option of a starting and ending point, June 1st or June 15th, 1938, to October 8th or 22nd, 1944. But do the numbers add up? By taking both options and adding 2,300 days, we have an option of it ending in September 17th, 1944, or October 1st, 1944. This doesn't add up either. To be sure, the writers of this publication most likely had their own homespun calculations and conversions. It's really hard to tell because it isn't broken out. The numbers just don't seem to add up. Something of monumental importance should be spelled out in detail, at the very least in an appendix. None of the prophetic time periods on this chart are valid. For instance, with the seven times, starting in October 607 BCE, we know that Jerusalem was destroyed in 587 BC. The three and a half times do not add up, neither do the 2,300 evenings and mornings, neither does this interpretation of the 70 weeks of years, for it is begun in 455 BC as the 20th year of Artaxerxes, and that is 10 years off. And we can see that neither did the 1,290 days or the 1,335 days add up either. Again, why is this important? Because all these prophetic markers should establish credibility of this one particular group as God's channel. By paying more than usual attention, we find that these so-called prophetic marks fail to add up. What does this say about the credibility of the group that claims to represent the Holy Ones of the Supreme One?